get started. This is Gangrel, the Vampire Warrior, and you're fanging and banging. Fist to Face Podcast with TMP. Want some? Get some? Bad enough? Take Hey, some. everybody, and welcome to Season 2 of the Fist to Face Podcast. In this episode, we'll be hanging out with ECW original Mustafa Money Loves Me Saeed. Chopping it up about wrestling in the NWA. Being an ECW original in the Gangsters with New Jack. Smoky Mountain Wrestling with Jim Cornette. Tagging with Tommy Dreamer. Cutting promos on OJ Simpson. And clearing the air on comments regarding Bruiser Brody's untimely death. This episode of the Fist to Face podcast is presented by Brawler Sports Management. Brawler Brew Energy Drink. Charlatan Records. Knock out your legal issues with Nog Law Firm. Aggressive trial attorneys, criminal defense, and family law. Texas, what people have to remember is that the general rule is everything that you acquire, um, assets, debts, and liabilities during the marriage, they're going to be presumed to be community property. You know, a good lawyer is going to be able to kind of help you navigate, you know, the, the pitfalls of selling the house, getting it appraised, making sure that, you know, you're protected with the, the closing, the title company and all that. And Outlaw Fit Camp. Make fit happen. Outlawfitcamp.com. Real people, real results. Now sit back, crank it up, and let's bring the fist to face. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Fist to Face podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Fist to Face podcast. I am your host, TMD. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, what an honor today. We have got the one and only ECW original, one half of the gangsters. We are talking about one of the kindest individuals you could ever run into into a locker room. And damn it, if you have him in a locker room, pick his brain. He is more than happy to share his knowledge with you. I am talking about the one and the only Money Loves Me, Mustafa Saeed. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm doing good, man. But, but let me tell you something, man. Uh, it, 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 it's a lot of trash out there. You know how it go, man, sometimes. And uh, they, they, they get, now they got a... Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen it. It might have been months ago. They had me talking about that uh, uh, Bruiser Brody deserved to die kind of thing on the, on a video. I did with a, a guy a long time in Monty and the, the Pharaoh back in the day. And okay. uh, they, they put that up there. And then, you know, they want, I guess they wanted some views or they just didn't pay attention to what they said. And I, I never said that uh, a bruiser Brody deserved to die. You know, all I said was, hey, man, when you in that territory like that, you got to watch your back. That's basically what the message was, you know, and then, okay. but they didn't. But then again, I need the people to probably need to watch the whole segment understand what i was talking about yeah that is that is today's environment unfortunately you know things get misconstrued quotes get taken out of context uh but of course you know we anybody who knows you knows you wouldn't wish nothing like that on on anybody oh yeah come on man um uh speaking of which mustafa um uh unfortunate breaking news today uh ollie anderson passed away yeah i just i just seen one of my uh one of my people always uh we go back and forth and find out who died today, uh, or uh, uh, who who may who did something great. You know what I mean. So um, yeah, that's sad. That's sad because uh, he was. They were one of my favorite. Uh, Gene Anderson, which wasn't his real brother, but you know, it was Gene Anderson and the the Ole Anderson was the original a Wrecking Crew with uh, his other brother back in the day, and uh, you know, a Lars Anderson. And, uh, you know, they were the wrecking crew and then they finally broke off with Ole and Gene. And, uh, I used to go watch them in Charlotte Coliseum all the time or Charlotte Park Center. Uh, they would wrestle Wahoo McDaniels and Paul Jones and Bruiser Brody, like I was saying before, Bruiser Brody was one of my guys that wanted me to, uh, that I wanted to get in wrestling because of people like that. You know what I'm saying? So, but Gene, the one that trained me back in the old NWA days. Yeah, that, that's why I brought up uh, Ole Anderson because I know Gene Anderson trained you. Yes. And uh and, and not af- not long after he uh trained you and you broke into the business, you started in WCW. Like you started, started with, with, where the big boys play. Like, I mean, did you spend any times uh on, on the independent scene before uh you started at WCW? Um what what it was was uh yeah I was doing independence uh, uh things like that but uh also I had went to uh, WWF too 
So I really? was going all at the same time. Yeah, I was going all at the same time. And, uh, you know, up there jobbing and stuff like that. But we're still learning the business experience and stuff like that. And uh, WCW, uh, Gene sent me down to WCW more because plus it was close by. And then uh, uh, also, you know, they would work me more because, uh, you know, it was more the, the WWF was uh don't, don't get me wrong because people take it wrong how you say stuff. Yeah. WWF yeah. was more at that time was entertainment. Uh, they had some, they still had some tough guys up there. They was more into the entertainment side of it. The other side of WCW or NWA, they were still into wrestling, you know, really wrestling and, and uh, more wrestling than show. Right, right, right. It's still the same so, thing though. Making yeah, money. I- that and there it is, and that's the most important. That's what uh, they say uh, is the only thing real in the business. Basically, is the miles and the money, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, how, how did you uh, get started? Uh, I know, I know, Gene uh, trained you, but like, how, how did you initially get your foot into the door and in, into what? the pro wrestling business? Well, you know how they they always say uh, somebody pass you the blunt, and they say you start smoking. <laughs> you start blaming them because they. But my grandfather, the one, got me hooked on pro wrestling. So I go spend the night up there at his house, man. And uh, a couple of times I was playing in front of the TV. I must have been six or seven years old. He had that look like, man, if you don't get out in front of that TV, wrestling coming on. And next thing you know, it was Mid Atlantic wrestling was coming on. It was like I said, it was Rip Hawk, uh, Ric Flair, Wahoo McDaniel's, Johnny Valentine. Uh, uh, shoot, Tiger Conway Jr. I can go. I can go. I say uh, name some names. You know I what I'm saying? It. So I, I right. love hearing it. I love hearing it. I love hearing it. And that's how I got um, hooked. So Plus he took uh, me to a live match. Plus he took me to a live match. Uh, we played. I played hooky from school one night, and uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, we went to the match on Tuesday night. And the, the main event was uh, Johnny Valentine against Wahoo McDaniel's, and uh, Jobber had came out to it, the first match. And I was, we was all booing him. He looked like he looked at me. Next thing you know, it he said, uh, "Shut your hole!" And I <laughs> ran behind my grandfather. Man, he scared the hell out of me so bad. You know what I'm saying? So I was hooked uh, after that. Did your grandfather get to see you uh, wrestle? Nah, man, he died, man, right before uh, I really got developed. You know what I'm saying? Man, yeah. I'm, he had the best seat in the house, no doubt about oh, that. Yeah. So after uh, WCW, man, uh, you ended up in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Um, yes. Please tell us a little bit about your time in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Well, the 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 the, the fun part was uh, the Jim Cornette gave us a deal. Uh, me and New Jack and uh, New Jack, man, uh, 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 R.I.P. Man, uh, yes, that was my boy. Uh, mm-hmm. We we uh, got a deal up there, and. Um, uh, you know, New Jack was the, New Jack was the 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 the, the lead man. You know what I'm saying? Because he came up with the gimmick, and uh, I was just you know I followed behind, and because uh, I, I was wearing tights, <laughs> you know the same <laughs> stuff that we normally do, and uh, so he said, uh, "Hey man, you can start wearing this and start putting on fatigues and stuff like that." And then Jim uh, hooked us up, man. You know, we were we were independent though. We were wrestling together, independent, uh, doing North Georgia wrestling at first. And then we went to a match at uh, Stone Mountain, Georgia, and it was uh, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Garvin was there, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Sullivan, you know, the Macho Man, you know, those guys was wrestling. We we, we worked that, that night, and uh, next thing you know, Jim gave us a deal, man, to come to Smoky Mountain. Wow. You know, there's two promos from that era that uh, you and New Jack that really stands out. The first one was uh, against The Undertaker. Uh, you guys were by a cemetery. Yo, yeah, we promo? was in a cemetery. We was actually in a cemetery. Yeah. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that promo, please? Oh, dude, that that spooked me out. Now I'm not. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. You know, the, the the thing about it was, you know, I mean, we were here playing like this with the dead, like <laughs> like this, and and uh, we did a promo. It was a uh, D'Lo, um, uh, 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 Cal, at the time he was with us, uh, in New Jack. And uh, we had the shovels and stuff like that, like we was going to dig up a grave, which yep. I doubt that I was going to do something like that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, we told that like we're going to dig up a grave to, to make sure we're not scared of the Undertaker. And the actual cat, they did have a cat, you know, come out of nowhere, and uh, it was just cool, you know what I'm saying? So it worked out so, pretty good. So I, I, I remember that promo, and, man, 
uh, who could forget the promo with you and New Jack and uh, about OJ Simpson? Oh yeah. Oh well, you know, you know, Jim Cornette. <laughs> he wanted that kind of controversy. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he said, uh, "Go out there and say what you're gonna say, uh, but we're gonna put it under the uh, bottom of the, you know, the the screen where the views does not uh, right. reflect." You know, uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, right, they weren't yeah. trying to get they weren't trying to get canceled in the 80s back then right right right, right. could you believe it? you we, we couldn't even get nowhere saying some of the stuff we said in ecw and oh god uh, right no, now. man speaking of ecw i mean wow you are an ecw original and one of the things i love the most is is when you come uh being at spw in sacramento yeah. anytime you come out and your song hits the people go crazy they throw up right. the asses, <laughs> yeah. man. I, Man, they still love you, and and the energy, man. If anyone's sitting down, whenever you come through those curtains, everyone's up throwing the X in the air. Um, you know, ECW still resonates to this day. So everyone looks back fondly on those years. You were such a huge part in, in those years, man. The gangsters. Well, you guys had some uh, some really uh, crazy matches. What what was the ECW environment like? Was it really as is 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 like Wild West as as they kind of portray it to be? Was it um, was it crazy? Put it this way: we we will all be going to jail right now. All the <laughs> stuff we had, we we, wow. we you you we, we had it all, man. We had uh, the roids, the everything. You know, we had everything you needed. And this was Every, backstage. Everything you needed. Yes, we was had it, everything this, you needed. Was this during a show? Was this like during the show? Oh yeah, during the show. It's every, it's every, every episode, every, every show that you've seen. Back in the dressing room, everybody had everything you needed. Hey man, uh, uh, I, I need some stitches. All right, we're gonna glue you. They glue you shut. They glue your eyes shut. Or whatever. <laughs> you know they had everything, man. You, uh, you needed some pills wow. for uh, for this for that. It, everything was there, man. You know, drinking. Wow, man. You wanted to drink. You, they they had the drinkers there. You know, uh, Sandman was my man. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying so. Uh, you know, it was no, no. It was a party, man. Every time. What What was your drink of choice back then? Well, uh, you know, you heard the thing about the pencil shavings and all, <laughs> so all that kind of stuff like that. But uh, the, my, my my thing was, uh, shoot, I just I like to drink a beer, man. At that time, you what know? kind of beer? Oh uh, shoot! It was always a forty ounce man. So it's always the old English or something like that. Oldie, yeah, oldie, yeah, yeah, okay. do that ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you right, had to light that up. Then, you know, but if I got a Budweiser or something like that, I wouldn't complain. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. right. Okay, yeah, yeah, man. So, um, can you please uh, tell us? Do you, I mean, do you have any? What's your fondest memory of working with New Jack and ECW? Because you guys did a lot, a lot of, a lot of angles. You guys had a, a lot of parts in, in the storyline uh was there any fond ones that stand out in particular well uh you know we, we went against uh well, all of them were good man all of them were good you know the thing about it was uh it seemed like it, you know jack was always uh, mad at somebody <laughs> so you know it was all good you know what i'm saying so uh he get mad at me and then he get mad at the uh, uh paulie he get mad at everybody but you know it, at the end of the day uh i enjoyed it all man you know what I'm saying? And I'm so glad that I was associated with him. Uh, uh, he changed my life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, hopefully, you know, at that time, you know, I uh, did the same thing for him. He's, and he would get mad at me. I had it coming sometimes. You know, I would do stuff, you know, sometimes. But uh, but it was all love, man. You know, we was all uh, we was brothers, man. You know, you've 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 uh, worked with a lot of polarizing characters in your time. Yes. Um, First, please tell us what what, what is Jim Cornette like? Have you ever seen um, um, Weird Science? Of course, I love that movie. That, 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 the the uh, or, or the other one. What was the other one with? Um, uh, uh, Back to the Future. Of was course, that saw that too. One? Yeah, you you see the old crazy dude uh, that was in it uh, with uh, Doc Michael, Michael J. Fox. Yeah, Doc. Yeah, uh, Christopher yeah, Boyd, Doc. Doc. Mm -hmm. You remember him? That's uh -huh. what it was. That was uh, just a, a a fool, you know. But <laughs> but he was a genius, though. He was a genius, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So okay. uh, he knew the business. Uh, he knew how to talk. Uh, you know everything. So it was a, it, it, it was good. Of course, that's the Smoky uh, Mountain uh, wrestling um, era, uh, and then of course uh, bringing it to Paul 
Paul Heyman. What was well, Paul you Heyman know, like? You know, we, 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 you know, I don't use this word loosely all the time, but it was, they were geniuses, man. They uh, loved the business. Uh, and uh, but but you know you also got to watch your back too now because you know if mm -hmm. if you didn't uh, check yourself uh, they they would they they use you man and 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 you know you wouldn't you couldn't get back but you had to you had to really put your foot down with them but they were they were good people man they 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 put you on and then that was our job to stay on there you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but they put you on and hey I can't I can't argue with that. Um, la lastly, uh, wrapping up the ECW stuff. Um, were you there for the mass transit incident? Oh yeah, I was in the ring, man. Uh, you know, I was <laughs> oh, the one suplexing. I suplexed him at the. Oh, you, you know, were there. You were. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you had you had the best seat in the house. To yeah, it, it it was uh you know uh, what the thing that uh was bad about it was. I could see from the get go that it was going to be a bad idea bringing him out because he just didn't look like a wrestler, man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? He lied. So, he lied. He lied about his training. You yeah, know, he lied. Not, you know, not not defending anything New Jack did, but right. he should have. He should have never been in that ring in the first place. That is universally uh, understood. Absolutely, right. he, he should have never been. He was a kid. He was like yes. what, like 15, 16, 15 years old. And, well, he was about seventeen. He was about seventeen. Okay. That I hey. know of. And he was a big you know, boy. He, he yeah, was a big yeah, boy. Yeah, right. And uh, mm -hmm. he, he shouldn't have been out there, man. And it, 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 it did what it did, man. It do what it do, as they say. Man, yeah. If you're not familiar with that uh, footage, all you got to do is Google it because it, right. it's out there. You know, uh, fast forwarding, um, a lot of people, if they want to see you, uh, man, you're a regular. You're a mainstay in Supreme Pro Wrestling out of Sacramento. And, yeah. I, and I mean it, man. These these uh, fans love you there. Um, please tell me, like, uh, what's your experience been like? Uh, and w it seems like um, not that it's your home promotion, but man, you you're always at Supreme Pro Wrestling. What is oh, it yeah. about? Uh, uh, what is it about uh, SPW that you love so much that you're always there? Which well, man, SPW I'm is just the one that accepted me the, the, at first. You know, really accepted me at first. Other other guys were. Uh, the other uh, places are good too, but that that the SBW, uh, the Samurai, you know, we got yeah. together, man, and uh, we we just been clicking, man, the uh, the whole time. And so I said, well, I'm I'm in SAC, and uh, let me go on and kick it here, man. And and, and uh, plus the guys that we got talent, man, we got a whole lot of talent, man. It's unbelievable. Because I think that's awesome that that fans can roll and see you every uh, every month uh, in yes. Sacramento. As a matter of fact, there was a match not too long ago when Tommy Dreamer came and you guys tagged. We tagged. Uh, that yes. was that was an awesome sight. You know, you're getting right. two e ECW originals and the fans lit up, man. And oh, I, I watched. I was right. watching. And you know, one thing I love about you is um, I'm I'm like I'm 45, so I, I I'm much I'm you know I'm, I'm younger. Uh, oh, yeah. But when I when I come in when I come into the building, I'm just worn out from the road, man. Drive driving in from L.A. I got so much shit going on, like everybody else. But I and, I and I don't have the energy to do anything extra. But if you look to the corner, you'll see Mustafa Saeed in the corner. He's doing jump ropes. He's doing jumping jacks. He's doing push-ups. <laughs> like man, yeah. you you uh, are nonstop. Like you uh, are an inspiration to me. For one, honestly. Because of the energy you Appreciate have, it. the personality you have, uh, and you are uh, the knowledge you possess, man. Like, I I, I recommend anybody in the business. If yes, yes, y'all. It is TMD, the handsome half-breed, the host of the Fist of Face podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube, Apple, Amazon, and iHeartRadio. If you ever get a, a chance to run across Mustafa Saeed in the back, well, I just pick his brain. Uh, he's a very nice uh, guy to talk to, and he's always kicking down knowledge. And I just, I love seeing that man. You're just ready to go at all times, man. Well, you know, like like right now, uh, um, I I can stomp the uh, toothbrush right now and, and and stomp it out real quick. You know, I'd be ready to go all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just uh, yeah, one uh, of those things that uh, um, I got. Well, like I said, I got it from Mid Atlantic, man. Mid Atlantic was uh, uh, their angles. And the, uh, I ain't gonna sit there and say they had the greatest booking all the time. Uh, uh, as I'm in the business now and the promotion, 
was uh, was good. But you know, it, it, you get that um, you get to the point where you want to spread out too much, and um, that, that's what makes most promotions go down because they go too far, and instead of just staying where uh, you know their roots and stuff. But uh, the point I'm trying to say is is that. Watching Mid Atlantic, it made me. Uh, it, it, even the job guys were uh, were tough, you know. And don't get me wrong; they were shooters. Some of them were shooters. A lot of people. Not once mm -hmm. you get in the business, you start finding. I'm glad out. you asked that. I'm glad yeah. you had, uh, mentioned that. I'm glad you. You're right. You know, the shooting. Most guys will beat you up. You know, some of those guys mm -hmm. uh, that you think you would whoop, you yeah. gonna get in the rude away. <laughs> you okay, so <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, funny. Mustafa, before we let you go, um, yeah, I yeah. just wanted to do a, a a really quick word association with you. Okay. I'm just gonna mention mention somebody's name, and you just tell me uh, in one word or however you want to describe it. It's your interview. You, okay. you could you could you could uh, just say one word or or, or comment uh, whatever you want to do. But I'm just gonna yeah. say the person's name because you've mixed it up with so many freaking people in this business. Oh yeah. I'm just going to shoot some names and uh, let, let's get some word association going on with you. Uh, first name that comes to mind is going to be uh, Ole Anderson. Uh, man, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I don't have one word to say about uh, uh, like that. But uh, Ole, um, even though he was all about business, man, and, and he, 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 he taught me uh, a few things as being close and talking to him. So, he, he, man, he was all about business, man, the business. Gene Anderson. Real. Ron Simmons. That's my man. Yeah, Ron, Ron helped me out too, man. So yeah, cool. Cool. Cactus Jack. Different. But in a good way. In a good way. He was good people. Two cold Scorpio. Oh, that's my man, man. Go too cold. <laughs> yeah, Tuco called me up, man. He, 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 boy, he put up with me and, and he helped me out, bro. Thank you, Tuco. Eric Watts. Oh, Eric was cool. You know what I'm saying? We had a a, a match, you know, and, and things. Uh, and uh, we could have did something. Could have made a little money if they would have uh, let us do it the right way. Harry Saturn. Oh, man. Uh, man. Uh, he's in another galaxy. You know what I'm saying? That's all I can say about him. Uh, it, it, another galaxy, man. It was, it was cool, though. Jim Cornette. A crazy genius, bro. That's all <laughs> I can say. Yeah, hey, well, that's well said. Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman. Um, Paul Heyman was, um, I would say, and this is uh, the being honest with him, Paul Heyman was... Uh, 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 just a great businessman. Great businessman. And uh, lastly, uh, New Jack. Oh, man, that's my brother, man. Uh, I love New Jack, man, and uh, uh, Jerome, man. and uh, I miss him. And um, damn, man, you know, when when it happened to him, it just it, it broke my heart. I, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but that was my brother, man. Love him, man. Miss him. Yes, sir. Yes, R. sir. R. So, Yes, sir. R.I.P. Rest in peace. Um, we are going to uh, give you uh, we're going to send you off with a knockout question of the night. This is okay. the last question. Last question of the night. Uh, have you ever had to shoot? Uh, it's talking about shooters. Has anybody ever tried to shoot on you or have you ever had to shoot on somebody? I, I'm not going to say no names, but yeah, I, I had to do a lot of shooting before, you know, uh, certain things. And I fooled a lot of them because and I want to thank Gene Anderson for that. <laughs> And okay. a couple of guys that was that was in the NWA, you know, because you know there was a lot of Division One, Division Two uh, wrestlers, NAIA wrestlers that turned into pro wrestlers, and uh, mm -hmm. they we would wrestle all the time. And, and, and you never know, bro. I said, well, come on, let's get in the ring and do it. But uh, yeah, uh, I want to thank Gene Anderson for that, for getting me beat up like that and help me out. <laughs> well, man, there it is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mustafa Saeed. Thank you so much for coming on to the Fist of Face podcast, uh, man. Uh, we were so stoked uh, when you said you were going to come on, and we really appreciate it because uh, I, myself, the Rock and Rodeo Express, uh, uh, I'm sure everywhere around the world, man, we have so much love and respect for you, man. So we really appreciate you giving us your time. 
Man, I'm glad you uh, did it, man. But I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I didn't think he was gonna call me, man. You know what I'm saying? What are you so. talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You are money loves me, Mustafa Saeed. What are you oh, talking yeah, you about? <laughs> come on now. I, I would never. Come on now. I'm, I'm, uh, we are blessed to have you on this show. Uh, so uh, once again, people out there, if you're listening, uh, man, look him up. He's got plenty of footage on, on YouTube, man. And there's plenty of shows. You want to see him live and in person uh, in Sacramento? Just follow Supreme Pro Wrestling. Uh, and um, man, come come say what's up. Uh, thank you, thank you again, Mustafa, very no, much. Thank for you, stopping bro. By. After you right, have man. a good night. I, I, I'll see you in March at SPW. Yeah, you know we gonna see each other. Yeah. Sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Have a good night, sir. All right. Good Bye. night. This episode of the Fist to Face podcast is presented by Brawler Sports Management, Brawler Brew Energy Drink, Charlatan Records. Knock out your legal issues with Nog Law Firm, aggressive trial attorneys, criminal defense, and family law. And Outlaw Fit Camp. Make fit happen. Outlawfitcamp.com. Real people, real results. Yes, yes, y'all. It is TMD, the handsome half rate, the host of the Fist to Face podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube, Apple, Amazon, and iHeartRadio. Radio. <laughs>